My name's Ollie Dixon. I am the co-founder of Something and Nothing. We make very delicious drinks. Um, background. Well, I guess I come from a background that blends culture and brand and hospitality. Um, I used to work for a magazine called Dazed and Confused and then went on a bit of a mixture of working for pubs, doing kind of programming and marketing. I made music and became a DJ for a while, toured around the world, then lost a record deal and wanted to do something more sensible. So I started an agency and we kind of built brands and connected them with culture. And then I was like, maybe I should do my own thing and test some of the theories that other clients were not so confident in doing. So something and nothing. Um, as I said, we make really exceptionally delicious drinks. Flavor and taste is really at the core of everything we do. Um, we try to create a brand that was really unique, um, that kind of stood out on shelf and felt maybe more like a I hate to use the term lifestyle brand rather than a drinks brand. Um, but really the liquids, the kind of star of the show, uh, we only use natural ingredients. So how it all started really was I own or started a bit of a pub in Hackney called The Gun. And I spent six months drinking pretty heavily, <laughs> enjoying everything that you get when you start a bar. Uh, all the kind of um, high-end spirits, craft beer was really big at that stage. And after about six months, I was like, I really need to like take a break for a little bit on the booze front and was kind of thinking, what do you drink in this sort of like fun space where music's going on and people chatting that isn't just sparkling water? Um, and that's when I began to look at like the soft drinks in this country specifically init initially thinking that they're pretty poor in terms of ingredients, really sweet, um, kind of boring flavors. I was like, so well, someone should do this better. And then I was like, well, maybe that someone should be me and kind of went on the journey of how you create a drink. Wanted it to be healthy, but realized pretty quickly that a no calorie drink is kind of useless. Any good bartender will tell you you need sweetness and you need the kind of uh, bitterness to kind of create a really good drink. So we worked out that if you add grape juice and lemon juice, you get this really interesting balance in the middle of the drink. And then you add the kind of core flavors on 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 top, um, which is how all the drinks work kind of to your um, what you guys do. They're all really influenced by travel. The hibiscus and rose soda was based on a drink I tried in Sri Lanka, which was really delicious, but really sweet. And I kind of took that idea and we kind of made it in our sort of framework with the with the grape and the lemon. Um, yuzu was trips to Japan and cucumber, I guess is sort of Scandinavian English, but you know, the name. So it depends which version you want. <laughs> there was once a king and he wanted to rule the world. And he decided the best way to rule the world or to gain power was to create a map that was so detailed he would have this kind of ruling over the, over the planet. So he got all the best draftsmen and illustrators and painters and artisans to create this enormous map and he wanted it to be the same scale as the Earth. So they were all working really hard in these incredible detailed drawings over decades and decades. And eventually the king died and all the artisans and artists kind of wandered off into the mist and the map and the desert kind of mingled together, the paint and the fibers and the sand. And then no one knew what was real and what was the map, what was something and what was nothing. That could also be the premise to the matrix, but. So my personal favorite is the cucumber soda with mezcal um, with a little bit of probably a little extra squeeze of lime, a tiny bit of salt is really delicious. Um, and then the spritz is kind of where all this was born out of. We realized we wanted to create an alcoholic version 
hence the name something and nothing the scales etc but i like drinks that taste how they should taste like how a bartender would make them so when you're using spirits in a premix can it's a bit problematic because often to get that strength you have to have a tiny can or like you muddle it around and it, yeah, so you take a gin and tonic in a can it kind of tastes doesn't taste as good as if you make it at home or with a bartender so we wanted to use alcohol that you could use at full strength so that's why we went down the spritz route so the we got two made with french wine from uh, a fifth generation wine producer in the Cote de Gascoigne, it's pretty good quality wine. And then that's mixed with our natural ingredients, botanicals, so on and so forth. And then this is the new one, which is the sake spritz, which again, sake, 15%. So it mixes really well with the water and the natural ingredients to make a 15% drink. So that is convenient <laughs> to have it in that form. And I guess, yeah, they're made in a way that you know you would make it uh in a bar or, or at home and then yeah the sodas are pretty versatile there a lot of um there's a bar called top cuvee which i'm sure you know uh they make a paloma with our hibiscus of rose uh just a massive chunk of um uh grapefruit in there and then the yuzu makes a really good highball actually if you mix it with um again i would a not good japanese whiskey kind of massive ice cube no garnish yeah it's really delicious you get the the citrus working well with the with the whiskey not saying it up there's always issues and problems with production i think where someone said to us once you know they were like you know you're you're essentially manufacturing something you're creating something you're always going to have issues and we certainly had quite early on we had a massive issue with our first run of hibiscus and rose they were ex we basically made kombucha um unintentionally but made were exploding cans all sorts of stuff we kind of got through that and thought well, well that's it now we won't have anything else but probably most production runs there's some there's something you, you know pretty small these days because we're a bit more experienced but i think it's never that straightforward um, and then with the spritz, you know, where the the sake is really good quality Jumai sake from Japan. So it's shipped over from Osaka. So there's a logistics of that and it coming into the UK and then being produced uh, in, in, into those cans. There's a lot of moving parts with the, with the alcohol uh, element. But yeah, production's never easy. When I had my agency... I work with these designers, Adam and Callum, uh, Studio AFCC, <laughs> really closely. And we've worked on projects since we worked on Birch Hotel together before I went full time on something and nothing. Um, and yeah, we, we kind of spent quite a few months sharing loads of like references and ideas. And, and the whole point was really to create a drink that didn't look like a drink. Um, I think the first trade show we went to some like old dude from the industry was like, you got a cucumber drink, but you haven't got a picture of cucumbers on the front. Like, what are you thinking? You need to show the consumer what's in there. And our thing was like, yeah, but we kind of it gives the essence of what we think the drink does. Like we always say, it's like jumping in a pool or summer in a can or whatever. Like that, I think particularly in the FMCG world, people don't give much respect to consumers. They kind of think they're all dumb and like, you just have to hit them over the head with all the kind of basic information. Whereas our uh, philosophy is a bit more like people, you know, love products and love really good products, love good ingredients, love good brands. So if you put some love and some thought into it, then they tend to respond uh, in, in that way. And that's what we found really is that we have, you know, we don't, really spend any money on marketing it's all kind of organic we're now launched in the us and the amount of people who share photos of the can or them with the can and you know always or oh, nine times out of ten really good reviews about the liquid so yeah it was kind of a risk i think and if we were owned by brick brick or whatever there's no way <laughs> we would have got away with it a kind of weird name and a kind of very minimal design but it works really well like i said taste is kind of our most important part of the 
of 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 something and nothing of what we offer and we're really fortunate that we've won a great taste award for all of our drinks except for this one because it's brand new we were here in august um but as far as i'm aware i think we've won more great taste awards than any other drinks brand and i guess that is the point with all of this is there's nothing kind of gimmicky it's built out of love of drinks and flavor and the hospitality industry and brands and culture and all that stuff is kind of piled into this um so uh so yeah i you know we we don't skimp on on quality of ingredients they're all really great quality natural ingredients and then the alcohol as i said is 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 really good quality uh the french wine and the japanese sake so yeah we're really this is like our kind of difficult second album. <laughs> the sodas do really well. This is like our kind of jazz techno fusion album. We're kind of waiting for people to kind of make it take off. Um, but uh, yeah, the, like this summer so far has been really, really interesting and really good that it's getting such a good reception.